Welcome to the Bible Truth of Our Hymns. We're going to look at a hymn from a hymnal and check it to see if that hymn is biblically sound or not. There are stanzas in the hymns or words that are not correct from the Bible. We need to see that in a church where there are three types of people. Number one, they're saved and serving and loving the Lord. Number two, they're saved and they're worldly. And number three, lastly, they're lost men. Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account. Are we proposing men and women in the church to sin by the hymns that are chosen? We will examine some, but not all, in this study. We will set a groundwork that the sin, that the sin, the hymn that we missed, you can be able to check for yourself and study yourself to see is this hymn that I like correct now not all the hymns that we're going to look at will be wrong many will be great and wonderful hymns and a few will have to be is it really proper will it glorify God or will it cause a man to sin The Biblical Truth of Our Hymns Praise to the Lord Almighty It's written by Jochem Neander which has an interesting story about this one In the year, early years, in the early 19th century, forgive me a large cave was named Neander Hall after him In the mid 19th century the cement industry started to quarry the limestone and the narrow ravine came a wide valley, which was now named Neander Valley, the, in the German would be ne Neanderthal. The ne near, I can't wait I say these words, getting hard and hard. The ne near Neanderthal man, that's of the evolution, you know, our ancestors, was found there in the summer of 1856. Giving Jochum the distinction of being the only hymnist with a fossil human, not even full part of a human, named after him. So what does Satan do? Praise the Lord Almighty. And we're going to look at a, a hymn that praises God of creation. And from the very spot that is named for him, a cave. <coughs> Satan and the archaeologists and the scientists has come up with a bone to show that we came from apes. Now many of Neander's hymns were speedily received into the Lutheran hymn books and are still in universal use. The fact that the author did not expect them to be used in public worship will sufficiently account Pietism and Covenant Theology are easily enough de detected in his hymns. Now let's look at his hymns. Praise the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Of my soul praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord. Who are all things so wondrously reigneth. Shelters thee under his wings. Yea, so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how thy desires ever have been? Granted in what he ordaineth. Praise to the Lord who does prosper thy work. And defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attendeth thee. Ponder anew. What the Almighty can do, if with his love he befriend me. Praise to the Lord. O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that life and bear breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. 
gladly forever adorn him. So it's a creation instead of an evolution with him. Health and salvation belongeth to God. All that here to his temple. Now Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. And it can't be the, the temple that's in heaven because only the saved. Not all here. Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few be there that find it. Not all that here will obey and be granted into heaven. The public ministry has never been promised by God 100% true. We are involved in a street mini ministry, and we have seen, I've been in the straight, street ministry, not straight, I don't know why I keep on saying straight. I've been involved in the street ministry. I can't even remember how far it goes back. 2006-2007. And I haven't seen anybody got saved from it. Not a one in front of me. Now, I don't know people in private, people later on. I've seen more people come to Christ in prison than I have on the street ministry. Is it a failure? No. So all that hear thee, let's just say eight years of street ministry, all the people that I have preached to and given gospel tracts out to, they all don't they hear, but they don't obey. Revelation 7.15, Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. Revelation 11.19, And the temple of God was open in heaven. So at the time that this writer is writing this, there is no earthly temple. There will be one in the tribulation period. There will be one in the millennium. There is one in heaven. So as a him in the church age who is this gentleman speaking about when it comes to temple is it the church building well in the book of acts they didn't meet in buildings they met in people's houses the great revivals of america have been in fields and barns and warehouses and houses and on street corner i know there are some people who call their church a temple But when you talk about church, it's not a building. Now the Christian, the body of Christ, is called a vessel. So, I don't understand. And as far as the heavenly temple, not all will hear, will see the heavenly temple. They made a movie about a man searching for the Ark of the Covenant. And that man whether actor or no actor in real life as the person who he is though he disguises himself under another name for profit the only way he can see the ark of the covenant for real is to believe on the lord jesus christ now and then when he's absent from the body or rapture when we are in heaven during the seven years of tribulation then he can see the ark of the covenant if you studied revelation so I don't know what temple he's talking about. Now, again, uh, maybe, maybe this is a pet peeve of mine. Maybe it's personal. But let's look at it again. There is no God and no Jesus. It says Almighty. But we can't use God? Can't use Jesus? What's wrong with us? There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. The name of Jesus. It's supposed to be Christian hymns. It's supposed to be sung in a church. And we don't mention God. We don't mention Jesus. You know, God and Jesus are sometimes removed from Bibles, the modern Bibles. All that hath life and breath cometh now with praises before him, the King James Bible says. Psalms. King James Bible says Psalms. One, 
50 verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All that has life and breath come now with him, with praises before him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Um, sounds the same. I'm just, I know it's in here. Let everything have breath. I know it's in here. But the old man. Oh, come on, Charlie. You can find it. You should have highlighted it. Oh, where is it? Okay. All that have life and breath come now with praises before him. Now, this is supposedly taken from Psalms 150 and Psalms 103. All right, if it is taken from Psalms 150, all that have life and breath come now with praises before him. Psalms 150 in the King James Bible says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That don't match the Bible. And it says that this psalm, this hymn is taken from Psalm 150. And we see that he has changed Psalm 150. Now don't we get upset when we, when we hear a Bible correction. The modern Bible. Oh how they changed the King James Bible. And yet when praise to the Lord the Almighty is chosen in the church. We don't make a reference to all that have life and breath come now with praises before. We don't say, hey, that's not what the Bible says. It's, I don't know. Now he seems to have the words like, he concludes uh, one, the king of creation. And you look at the stanzas here. The health and salvation. Temple draw near. Adoration. Wondrously reigneth. So greatly sustaineth. Desires there have been. Ordaineth. And defend thee. Attend thee. Miley can do. Befriend thee. In me adore him. Praises before him, his people again, forever adorn him. To Shepherd, I wonder what we have this, this third part of the stanza. Three stanzas match at the end. And I decided it's a musical word for that. I don't know. I'm not musical inclined. But so what we've done so we can get adore him before him and adore him again all that have life and breath come now with praises before him we have to change the King James Bible so it will match the hymn and I call that wrong I say in my opinion that's no better than a modern Bible that has changed what the King James Bible says from what I can see of my opinion, Psalm 150 verse 6 was changed so we can get the him, 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 him. Because the verse ends with Lord. And Lord is not him, 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 the, the word him in the him. So... I'm going to say in my opinion, I, I think it was, it was changed. I don't know. I never met the guy. never talked to the guy. He's dead. But I think we've taken a stanza, a verse, and we made it to our own appealing. And there was a hymn that I looked at yesterday and saw uh, out of Micah. And it was changed so we can have rhyme in a hymn. I guess that's another thing we're going to see. We're going to see these hymns. 
we're going to see stanzas and words change so we can make it rhythmic. We can make it poetry. You know, there's nothing like a tree on it an apple green. Oh, how the wind is so mean when that apple becomes free. You got a rhymes. But that's no reason to change the word of God. How thy desires all have been granted, and what he ordained. And verses found in other hymnals change this. So we are having changes not only in the Bibles, but we're finding changes already in the hymnals. They are eliminating verses and words and changing. Now, I'm not talking about a church that will, you know, let, all right, praise you, Lord. We're going to sing stanza one, two, and four. Well, they may, they may sing all four the next time. I was in a church with that. That's, that's the way they do things. But I'm talking about stanzas that have been completely, you open up to a hymn in your hymnal, <clears throat> and that stanza has been completely removed. That stanza has been changed by the words. So, how thy desires all have been granted and what he ordained. James 4 3, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. Now, I know what he's saying. What God has approved of our desires, what is right, he allows. I understand it. God answers prayer, yes, no, not now. Yes, it's a good thing for you. You can enjoy it. You will thank me for it. I'll give it to you. No, you're not ready for it. No, it's for your lust. No, for whatever reason, we don't know. And not now, you're not ready for it. I can ask God, I say, God, you give me the ability for good weather to go preach your word in the streets. And God will say, okay, I'll give you good weather, give you nice wind, and not make it so hot for the glory of Jesus Christ. And then, God, can I have this big fancy sports car? No. Because a sport car only holds two people, and you got a family of three. No. And then you, you get your five year old son comes up to you and he's got your razor in his hand he said dad can I shave like no not now that comes later son so God is merciful and wonder when it comes to prayers but let's look at the three people that are in churches today again all right number one there's a Christian that loves God, obeys God, and tries to do his best. He seeks to please God, and he fails. He's a sinner. Okay? Like me, and like you listening to it. All right, we understand. All that has life and breath. I'm, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong one. How thy desires all have been granted in what God, what he has done. I, I understand. What God approves of, he's going to grant. But you got the worldly Christian. And they're going to look at this, and they're going to sing this, and they're going to say, Oh, God will give me everything I want. And then gets mad because he hasn't studied the Bible. He hasn't read, read, read James 4, 3. And he's going to get mad at God because everything he has for God, he didn't get. And then you're going to get the worldly person. I mean, we're, we're going to get the unsaved person who's not saved. He doesn't know God. And he reads this thing as the worldly Christian. Gee, God will give me everything I want. God will be a bubblegum machine. I pop in my quarter. I turn the dial and I got my bubblegum. Well, I used to use bubblegum machines all the time. I grew up when they used to be a penny. And there's been many times without cut. Without counting, I put a coin in that slot, I turned the dial, opened up the flap, and there was nothing. That will get the worldly Christian, and that will get the unsaved man mad. I didn't get what I wanted. They'll even get mad. Hey, I got a bubble gum, but I didn't get the color I wanted. 
God, I asked for a blue bubble gum. You gave me yellow. So, for those that love God and study and are trying to, all that has life and breath come now with praises. I went to that verse again. I apologize. How thy desires all have been granted in what he ordained. Oh, I understand. I'm going to ask God for things and he may say no because it's not to my welfare. Okay. If that's the case, I just won't ask no more. I won't get mad. I won't get upset. So, and defending, even when I sin and reject God in his word, shall I prosper? God is my father. I am his son. Now, let me take an illustration here. you got a child. And he gets in trouble at school. And he gets called to the principal's office, whatever they call him today. And you get a phone call about your child, whatever he done. It has merit enough trouble that the principal has to take action. He has to step in. And the parent has to be called. Now, you get off that phone. And that child has done wrong. Beyond a shadow of doubt for this story. You get in your car. You drive all the way down that school. You get in the principal's face. And you get in the teacher's face. And you cuss them out. And you blame them. And you yell at them. And you defend your guilty child. Now is that an act of God? Would that picture the parent as God the Father? Absolutely not. God is not going to defend and stick up for his child that has done wrong. The Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He's not going to brush it under the carpet and, you know, okay, here, you can have it after all. God is firm and God is holy. Now, we do right, and we have blame, and we do right, and we suffer wrong, then God will defend us. If we do what he wants us to do, and there's a plot of whatever way by the enemy, he will defend us. But we got to be doing right. So what you're going to do is you're going to get that worldly Christian again. He's going to see this him. He's going to say, well, I can do whatever I want because I'm a child of God and he loves me and he'll protect me all the time. And what do you do when one of the chastisements that he gets in his life is because God is trying to correct him, trying to chastise him, and he don't see God as, well, he's supposed to defend me. All this trouble he's allowing, but Hebrews says that's for love. Oh, I read, I sang a song that says he's going to defend me no matter what. So, we could run into trouble with this. Um, and defending. Praise the Lord who does prosper thy work and defending. All right, praise to the Lord who, who does prosper thy work and defend me. Now, what are you going to do with that third stanza? When you got unsaved people in your church singing this. What are they going to get out of that stanza? Praise to the Lord who does prosper thy work and defend me. Wow, man, I'm making great money at this business and it must be God. Because I'm doing good. I don't have troubles in my life. And I'm getting all my desires. I'm getting all answers. So by that hymn that I sung at that church I visited Sunday morning. I must be right with God. Because everything. There we go. Is that what a lost man is to think? You got somebody that you know who's lost. 
You've been trying to witness to them. You've been trying to greet them. You've been trying to bring them to church. And they finally come to church and you pick up a hymn like this and they read it and they're going, could, they could walk away and say, hey, I'm okay. Now, isn't that a danger? Should we not in our churches today, when we got visitors like that, say, listen, hey, those who are worldly and don't want to do right with God, you better pay attention to what this song or hymn says. Because you could be found wanting in the judgment seat of Christ. For those who have never trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, I advise you not even try to sing the hymn, but just ask you, just read along as we sing. And may God bless your heart to see those words. Faith cometh by hearing. Let them hear and read. And not this hymn. This hymn is okay, in my opinion, but we could do better, okay? But there are going to be hymns that we're going to look at that are being sung in the churches. And there is no right for anybody to hear that hymn, to sing that hymn, especially the lost. I mean, when you come out of the grocery store, what is in your head more often from being in that store 10 to 60 minutes? Are you more likely to walk out of that store to hear, we've got to clean up an aisle four, we've got to sell on uh, potato chips, 10% off, you buy three bags, or are you going to have in your mind that music that is piped through the overhead? How many times have I walked out of a grocery store where I work as a born-again, Bible-believing, serving Christian, and I've walked out of that place with that music in my head? And we're dealing with music, and we're dealing in the realm of Lucifer, the fallen cherubim. I sat one day, well, not sat, but I was filling the car with fuel. And I... I'm sitting there, and I hear, turn, turn, turn. There's a season, and there's a time, there's a... Th I'm saying to myself, wait a minute. I know the birds did that song, but there's something about that song. But I couldn't catch the Bible reference found in Ecclesiastes, but there it is in my head. I went to a job interview the other night, and the guy was playing Name This Tune, and you got a stress ball. One of those, you know, there was a lot of new music, but thank God, I don't know. But he did a couple old-fashioned, my, my dad's old-time music, and boy, did that bring back times. And if Satan's a god of this world, and he attempts by 2 Corinthians 4, 4 to blind the world. If he's there after the sword, devouring the seeds that they will not get the word of God. Don't you think that even in a church that has Jesus Christ knocking on the door, trying to get somebody out of it. You, are you trying to tell me that Satan couldn't use some of these verses for a lost man and say, aren't you doing good? After all, you sang to him. You weren't giving no warning, were you? Uh, Styler, are you saying we shouldn't sing hymns at all? I don't want to go that far, but we need to be careful. I think if, if there's a stanza that's wrong, I think we just, we're going to sing this hymn, but we're going to sing two, three, and four. Not this, I'm, I'm talking about a hymn, not this one. If you got a, a hymn where stanza number one is completely wrong, don't sing it. Two's wrong, don't sing that. Don't sing three, four, five, or six. If it's scripturally wrong. And then when we run back to the Bible and Jesus said, uh, Every idle word that man shall speak, he will give an account thereof. And you read and sing a verse 
in a hymnal that could be wrong, you're looking for trouble. And you're looking to have to repent of your sins. And when was the last time that you ever saw in a church service that the hymns that you sang that you may need to repent of them? That's like walking into a modern church with a modern Bible. And you've got to confess your sins that you have not read the Word of God. You have not studied the Word of God. Because those are not the Word of God. In the realm of hymns, you got to walk like you're walking on eggs. And who walks on eggs? I think... The scripture that I read to you, broad is the way that leads to destruction. I think broad of the hymns will lead to destruction. If you can find five faithful hymns, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just picking a number. <coughs> picking a number out of here, five. And there's only five hymns that you can sing. And we saw some good ones. Better sing five that are great for God than 10,000. What did Paul say? I'd rather speak five words of understanding and have 10,000 words of an unknown tongue. Wouldn't that hold true for our hymns? Shouldn't we or look at who the author is? As we move on, we're going to see some author of hymns that are sung. They're Roman Catholic. Would you invite a Roman Catholic to talk out of your Baptist pulpit? Then why are you letting his song be in there? Why? We got to be careful. Because I don't know what dangers we could lie. Lying, one of them. We could give a false impression. Don't we realize that we're going to be judged as Christians? For everything we do, action, thoughts, our verbs will be judged. Our motives will be judged. And if it's wood, hay, or stubble, no matter who I like it, We've always done it like this. If it's wood, hay, or stubble, it will be ashes in the end and no reward at all. Aren't we supposed to abstain from the appearance of evil? Aren't we supposed to do right? That's why I'm doing this study on the hymnal. We're going to do great song hymns. See, I've been programming my mind already to say songs. I've been in so many churches, there's songs and no more hymns. My mind has been programmed. First thing, it's songs. It's supposed to be a hymn. Search the scriptures. Why not search the hymn though? I found some hymns that they're wrong and there's still some and you may like it but God doesn't care if you like it does God approve that's the question does God approve and if he doesn't to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. From a hymn? Yep. From a hymn.